This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Bishop Lawrence Kirby, Senior Pastor of St. Paul Church, Racine, Wisconsin, a congregation of Jesus Christ, where God's way is the best way. We're so glad you're part of the Bible study, wonderful Wednesday, Wednesday in the Word here at St. Paul Church. Let me encourage you to please get your Bibles out. We're doing Bible study. Our study is on the book of Ephesians. So if you can turn to that in the New Testament, that's where we begin our study today. And throughout this year, we'll be studying the epistle uh, to the church at Ephesus, uh, written by the Apostle Paul. Listen, let me encourage you to be safe and sanitary. Uh, the virus is still around, COVID, the new variant is around. Let me encourage you to wear your mask and, you know, practice social distancing still. And just take care of yourself and the family, the people who are around you. Let me encourage you to let us know what your prayer requests are. You can inbox us with your prayer requests. We would be glad to be praying for you and yours and whatever your situation or circumstance may be. Let me encourage you also to be a part of those Sunday worship of St. Paul Church. We're here every Sunday in person live, 11 a.m. and 8 a.m. And of course, we're live streaming and Facebook YouTube also, St. Paul Church. You can meet us there or meet us in person. Let me also encourage you to give to support the worldwide ministry of the St. Paul Church. Yes, we minister all over the world. Listen, you can do that by downloading the Givelify app, St. Paul Baptist Church of Racine. There, you'll see a picture of me so you know that you're at the right St. Paul. St. Paul Baptist Church of Racine. Wisconsin. Also, our mailing address, 1120 Grand Avenue, Racine, Wisconsin, 53403. Of course, you can always bring your tithes and offerings to the church on Sunday. I'll drop them off on Tuesday or Thursday here at our church. Listen, if God has blessed you, you ought to be a blessing to his church. We'd love for you to support the church ministry through the St. Paul Baptist Church here in Racine. Also appreciate if you drop a love offering in for the bishop. I do not receive a salary at all from our ministry. Have not done that in over 20 years now. So if this Bible study or worship blesses you and help you, just let me know that by just sending a gift through Givelify or my cash app is Bishop Dollar Sign, Bishop L. L. Kirby, Dollar Sign, Bishop L. L. Kirby. Thank you. Get your Bibles out. We're going to pray together and start our Bible study. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad yes, in it. Yes, I'll Lord. open our Bible study with a, a brief prayer. Father God, we, we thank you for just waking us up this morning and granting us a reasonable portion of health and strength, Lord. Father God, we know we couldn't do it without you, Lord. And, and we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for just seeing fit to um, let us take another breath this morning, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father God, I just uh, ask a special blessing right now for for Bishop and, and First Lady and their family, Lord. Yes, um, Father, just yes, continue Lord. to watch over him as he prepares to um, just help teach us more about you, Lord, and, yes, and uh, let us learn to love you more, Lord, and, and shows us um, the ways that we, sh we should follow, Lord, to become closer to you, Lord. Yes, Father, just yes. uh, continue to walk with them and, and, and keep him propped up on any leaning side, Lord, and just continue to pour into him so he can continue to pour into us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, yes, we thank Lord. you for his leadership, Lord. We we yes, thank Lord. you for his generosity, but most importantly, we, we thank you for his love, Lord. Yes, and Father, Lord. we just, um, just say thank you right now for him and his family, Lord. Father God, I ask a, a blessing right now for, for our, our children, Lord. Father God, I just ask that you just continue to watch over them and keep them safe, Lord, and, and, and continue to just keep them out of harm's way, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, Father, yes, day, Lord. every day we can open the newspaper or or turn on the Facebook and, and, and see our, our children are, are getting shot and killed or, or are committing crimes. And Lord, we just we just um, just ask that you just continue to cover them, Lord, and, and yes, keep them Lord. safe yes, from, from the dangers seen and unseen, Lord. Just continue to allow them to continue to grow closer to you and, and grow into the adults that we need them to be, Lord. Father God, I, I ask yes. a blessing right now for, for our educators, Lord, yes. those that are our teachers, our, our mentors, those that are working in the education system, Lord. Father, I just ask that you just continue yes. to keep them yes. encouraged yes. and Lord. continue yes. to allow them to find ways to um, keep our 
children engaged and, and, and allow them to reach them, Lord, so that we know that if they can reach them, Lord, that they can teach them and, and yes, allow Lord, them to yes, pour Lord. into them, Lord, to, so that they don't, the teachers and, and mentors don't get frustrated, Lord, because yes, yes, I know yes. it's a different time and, and, and they're competing for, for social media, they're competing for athletics, and they're competing for all other influences, Lord. But, but Lord, we ask that you be that influence over our, our children, and we ask that you just continue to pour into those that are trying to pour into our children, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, yes. God, I ask a blessing for those that are on our sick and shut in list, Lord. Yes. Father, you know what ailments people may be facing, Lord, and we just ask that you touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet, Lord. Um, whatever they may be going through, whether it's uh, physical problems, Lord, whether it's spiritual problems or mental problems, Lord, yes, you yes, can fix Lord. it because yes. we know that you are the ultimate healer, Lord. Yes, so, Lord. Father, yes. we just ask that you um, just pour into them, Lord, and, and bless them so that they don't have to go through anything they're facing alone, Lord. Yes, and, Father, Lord. just give them some peace that, that only that you can give, Lord. Father God, I ask a blessing right now for those that are dealing with bereavement or in the loss of loved ones, Lord. Yes, Father God, yes. I, I know it's, it's, it's hard, Lord. I, I've, I've gone through it myself, Lord, especially yes. during this pandemic. And it's different, Lord. I, we don't get to gather as much as we used to. We don't yeah, get to yeah, um, fellowship like we did, Lord. And, and Father God, we we need that. So, so Father, I ask that you stand in that gap for us yes, where we Lord, can't be yes, there, Lord, and, and be that rock that they can lean on and that, that shoulder they can cry on and just give them comfort and peace that only you can give, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father God, I ask a, a blessing right now for... For those that may not know you like we know you, Lord. Yes, and, and yes, Father, yes. just use us so that we can bring more people to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, by our actions and our words, let us just plant that seed. Because once we plant the seed, Lord, you'll do the rest, Lord. Yes, um, yes. Father, you'll grow that desire in their hearts and their, that, that desire in their minds to come yes, learn more yes, about Lord. you. And, yes, and, and Father, yes, as they learn more about you, they draw closer to you, Lord. And, Father, we, we need us to be able to go out and reach your people, Lord. Yes, Father, Lord. God, I also um, ask a blessing for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. And I just ask that, yes, that yes. Um, you help us to um, give ourselves a little bit of grace, Lord. Father, sometimes we, we are, we're hard on ourselves, Lord. We, we beat ourselves up because we don't have the things that we want to have or the things that we should be doing and we're not getting them done, Lord. And, and Father, sometimes we, we say things to ourselves that we would never say to another person, oh, Lord. Right, so, right. so Father, I just ask that you just continue to um, let us give ourselves a little bit of grace, Lord. Father, you always see fit to give yes, us grace. Yes, Father, you yes, always yes, give yes, us mercy, yes. but sometimes we need to show that mercy on ourselves, Lord. Mm. Um, Father God, last but not least, I want to say thank you for your darling son, yes, Jesus, Lord. Yes, yes, Father, Lord. without yes, him, Lord. we couldn't have this uh, yes, relationship yes, with you. Lord. He still yes, in the gap for us, Lord. And yes, Father, we Lord. thank you for that, Lord, by the sacrifices that he made on that cross, Lord, and, and the blood that was shed for our sins, Lord. Father, we, we thank you for that right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so we ask all these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Woo. Hallelujah. Again, I am Bishop Kirby, St. Paul Church in Racine, and this is our Wednesday Bible study. Wonderful Wednesday. A Wednesday in the Word. I'm sure you got your Bibles with you. Let us repeat our Bible page again as we do every Wednesday. Would you do that with me? Okay. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. God's Holy Word. God's Holy Word. It is a lamp under my feet. It is a lamp under my feet. It is a light on my pathway. It is a light onto my pathway. I will hide His Word. I will hide His Word. In my heart. In my heart. That I might not. That I might not. Sin against sin it. Sin against it. I will read it. I will read it. I will study it. I will study it. I will meditate on it. I will meditate on and it. And I will pray. And I will pray. That God. That God. Will help me. Will help me. To do. To do. What is written therein. What is written therein. Amen. Amen. All right, we together on the Word of God. And again, our study is on the book of Ephesians, one of the epistles written by the Apostle Paul uh, in the New Testament, the book of Ephesus, uh, the church in Ephesus. The book is Ephesians. And last week we introduced that book by looking at verse 1 and verse 2, amen, of chapter 1. And I try to point out to us that the overall theme throughout this entire book is a pattern for Christian living. If we are Christians, we have to live by a different standard, a different ethic, a different morality than those who may not be Christians. God is calling us to a higher way of living. God is calling us to a godly lifestyle. And that's what Paul is trying to teach in the early church and for that matter, trying to teach the churches of all generations 
that there is a certain lifestyle I and you and we ought to follow if we are born again Christian. So remember as we teach through these six chapters in the book of Ephesians that it's all about a pattern for Christian living. How I am supposed to live my life for the glory of God and for the good of mankind, okay? For the glory of God and for the good of mankind, our Bible study today. And uh, we'll start with verse 3 uh, because the, the theme of Ephesians 1 and 1 all the way to Ephesians 2 and 10. It's a paragraph, maybe three paragraphs of Scripture that all basically talk about the same thing. So for the first part of our study, we're going to be dealing with Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, going all the way through Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It'll be dealing with the same big idea. Amen. And the big idea that Paul deals with in these verses up to chapter 2, verse 10, is the plan of redemption. So for the next few sessions, we'll be talking about the plan of redemption. And that is the theme of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, all the way through Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. He's talking about God's plan for redemption. He's telling us and showing us how God, before the foundation of the world, ordained the whole process of redemption. Now, uh, just the way as an introduction, uh, verses... Uh, or 3 through 14, we already did verse 1 and 2. Verses 3 through 14 is really a hymn. It is often called the Apostle Paul's hymn. So it's really a, a song of praise. Verse 3 through verse 14 is really a psalm of praise or a hymn of praise talking about the provisions that God has made for our salvation. Under this big idea of the plan of salvation, there are two main parts. The provision for salvation, that's verse 1 through verse 14 of 1 chapter 1, and then the blessings of salvation, and that's verses 15 uh, all the way through the second chapter, verse 10. Two ideas under this plan, provisions of salvation are redemption, and then the blessing of salvation and redemption. Uh, let's read this hymn together, amen, I'm trying to read uh, from verse 10, amen, all the way through verse 14, and you can follow up with me in your Bible, or just listen, or if you got the Bible uh, recorded, you can just play it, but it, this is a hymn, listen to this hymn, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the, glow, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has made us accepted in his beloved, or the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, which he has made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mysteries of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who work all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trust in Christ should be the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, 
who is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of the precious possession to the praise of his glory. Wow, what a long sentence. What a mighty and a powerful sentence talking about redemption and salvation. And you do notice in this long hymn of praise that Paul really talks about what we call the Trinity. While the word Trinity is not used per se in here, the Trinity is presented in here. Trinity means three. Trinity means three. There is one God. Let me say that again. There is one God who has chosen to manifest himself to us in three different ways. One God, three manifestations. Not three gods, but one God who in a certain dispensation revealed himself to mankind one God, three manifestations. Say that with me. One God, three manifestations. When we look at God in Scripture, in the Old Testament, we basically see Father, see God as Father. In the Old Testament, as Father, He is Creator, the book of Genesis. In the Old Testament, as Father, He is Lawgiver, in the book of Exodus, in the book of Leviticus. So God, this one true God who stepped out on nothing and said, let us make man, is manifested himself in that first dispensation of time when creation started. He is God as Father. He is God as Father. And then in the process of time, another dispensation comes. It is a dispensation, the dispensation of grace. And in the dispensation of grace, God has chosen to reveal himself to us in the person of his son. In the person of his son. One God, three manifestations. We see him manifested in the Old Testament as Father. We see him manifested in the New Testament as Son. John tried to summarize it for us in the Gospel of John chapter 1. I won't take the time to read all of it, but I will recite part of it. The Gospel of John chapter 1, we see what is called in theology uh, the, the incarnation. That word incarnation. The word is incarnation. How God chose for his own will and his own purposes to come and be like us that he may save us from our sin. And John in his effort to try to describe that the finite man who is so limited in his knowledge. In John's effort to try to let us know what God is doing in Jesus, John chapter 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with him, and without him not anything was made that was made. In him was life. And that light became the light of men. And it shone in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He goes on in John chapter 1, read, he says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is God being manifested in his son Jesus Christ, who was given birth by Mary as mother, and God as father in the Gospels. This is a second manifestation. God, in a real sense, came closer to us in the New Testament than he was in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, he was seen as this distant father, this God that was so holy that ancient people could not call his name. They referred to him as Jehovah, as Yahweh, as Elohim, as Shaddai. But in the New Testament, God reveals himself to us in a personal way, because he comes to us as a person. In the Gospels, he is the man, Jesus Christ. And Paul would tell us in the book of Philippians that he humbled himself and took upon himself the form of human flesh and became obedient even to the death of the cross. He became flesh, but did no sin that he might be offered as a sinless sacrifice that his blood might be given as a sinless 
as a sinless sacrifice for my sin and yours. So that is the second manifestation of God. He is revealed as Jesus the Christ, the man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. The second manifestation of the divine and holy God who speaks in Genesis and refers to himself as us. Not just as father, but as us. As us means father, as us means son, and as us means Holy Spirit. After Jesus Christ ministered, or as he ministered, he said, I'm going to go away, but when I go away, I will send you a comforter. John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16, I will send you a comforter, another comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, and he will dwell with you forever. The promise again is in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, chapter number 15, and chapter number 16. This extensive teaching on God, the Holy Spirit, a third manifestation of God. One God, but here we see the third manifestation of him. Now to be sure, God manifested himself periodically or for certain reasons as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, but it was temporary. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. The book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, uh, ancient Israel had been taken to captivity in Babylon. And uh, you know the story about Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they refused to serve the idol gods of the Babylonians. And they stood and said, our God is God above all others. He is our father. We're going to be faithful to him no matter what. You remember King Nebuchadnezzar decided to throw those three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace to kill them for their faith? And you remember they said, the God we serve is able to deliver us. And he's able to deliver us from your hands, O king, even the fiery furnace. So he put them in the fiery furnace. You read the book of Daniel. The heat was so hot that it burned up the folk that were throwing them in because it was heated seven times hotter than usual. Well, they threw them in, but that night the king couldn't sleep. God made him restless. The father made him restless. He got up early that morning and went and looked at the fiery furnace. And he said, Shadrach, I know. Meshach, I know. Abednego, I know. But there's a fourth person, and he looks like a son of God. I want to suggest to you that that was a temporary manifestation of the second person of the Trinity. All right? Okay? You with me? You with me? All right, then let me give you another possible reference. Uh, in the book of Joshua, when the children of Israel had crossed the Jordan and were facing the land of the city of Jericho, and Joshua was so limited with his resources, and the Bible says he went out and prayed, and he was praying. Somebody showed up in his prayer. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 5, the last few verses. And Joshua is praying, and somebody shows up. And Joshua said, who are you? Are you for us or are you against us? He said, neither. I am the captain of the Lord's host. And he told Joshua, take off your shoes for the ground you stand is holding up. I want to suggest to you that could have been a temporary manifestation of the second person of the Trinity. All right? Okay. Then in the Old Testament, there were temporary manifestations as God is Holy Spirit. You remember Samson, don't you? In the book of Samuel, he had disobeyed God and taken wives that God didn't tell him to take. God told him he was a Nazarite. He was never to cut his hair. He was the strongest judge Israel ever had in terms of his physical fitness and strength. He flew around and told the woman what his strength was, and it was in his hair. He was a Nazarite, never to drink alcohol, never to cut his hair. And the woman got his hair cut off and weakened him, and he was going to die because they blinded him. And then Samson, saw, I mean, excuse me, Samson prayed and asked God to redeem him and give him strength. And he says to his captives, take me to the temple, take me to the pillars that hold up the temple. And he took him to the pillars that hold up the temple. And we read that real close. The spirit of God came upon Samson and renewed his strength. And he was able to push the column down and kill all the Philistines that were in the temple. They went, why? Because there was a temporary manifestation of the third person of the Trinity. 
And of course, we read the life of David throughout the books of history in the Old Testament. Whenever David killed the bear, whenever David killed the lion as a teenager, the Spirit of God came upon him. And when, God, and when David killed the great Philistine giant by the name of Goliath, it was not really David doing it. It was the Spirit of God doing it. God told him, get five smooth stones, put one in your slingshot, carry it around three times, and the Spirit of God was on him and with him, and the stone landed in Goliath's temple. He fell dead, fell and saw, and David got it because he did not. Because he said, the third manifestation of the Trinity. So we also see those temporary manifestations in the Old Testament. What Paul is doing here in Ephesians chapter number 1, commencing the reading with verse 3, is he is talking about how God manifests himself in three ways for our redemption, in three ways for our salvation. He's trying, I believe, my brothers and sisters, to get us to understand that redemption and salvation is always an act of God. Can I say that again? It is always an act of God. Can I say that again? Salvation and redemption are always acts of God. Acts of God as Father, acts of God as Son, and acts of God as Holy Spirit. And all three of these are mentioned here in this great hymn of praise. He starts out talking about God the Father and what God the Father has done. Amen. In the heavenlies, what God the Father done uh, before the foundation of the earth. How God the Father had foreknowledge and how, how that he predestined us, elected us to be saved. All oh, this is the work of the Father. You read it with me in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning reading with verse 3. And then he talks about what God the Holy what God the Son does in salvation. How Jesus Christ came down and how he saved us and amen, how he paid our sin debt for us at Calvary and how by accepting him by faith we can have redemption or eternal life. That's right here in this hymn of praise. Then he goes on to talk about the manifestation of God as Holy Spirit. Then you see it. He says, and we are sealed. We are sealed. We are sealed. We are secure to the day of redemption because we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit God as a guarantee or as a down payment for our salvation. So this great and wonderful hymn that Paul sings here and writes here in the book of Ephesians chapter number one is a hymn that talks about the provisions that God has made for our salvation. Now, to be sure, this entire text and context is a change of what religion had been used to. Because the religion of ancient time always seemed to point to what man could do to get right with that um, uh, divine one or that deity that he sought out to please or sought out to save, whether it was Greek philosophy or whether it was a standard of Judaism. It was always about what man could do. Because it has been said, and rightly so, I believe, that religion is the hand of man reaching up to God. And so we look at all the ancient religions of the world, and there are many, not just the seven major ones, there are many religions, and it's always talking about how we can reach God, or how we can get in relationship and fellowship with God. But in this dispensation, where God manifests himself as son, it's not us trying to figure out how to get in relation with God, but it's God who has already figured out before the foundation of the world how to bring us in relationship to him. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a whole change here. It's no longer I got to do this to please him. I got to do that to please him. He's a divine man. No. It's how God has done it all for me and all I have to do, all you have to do is accept what God has already done in the second manifestation, the second person of the Trinity, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I understand, and you understand, and we understand that salvation is an act of faith. Redemption is a divine gift. I'm going to say it again. 
Redemption or salvation is a divine gift. Let me say it again. Redemption, salvation is a divine gift. What can I do? Here's the only thing I can do. Put faith in Jesus Christ. Here's the only thing I can do to get saved. Accept the payment that Jesus made at Calvary as a cover for my sin. Here's what I can do to be saved. Acknowledge and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in my life because in this dispensation of grace, the second part of the Trinity, God himself, the second manifestation of God, God has paid our sin debt for us. The hymnologist said to us, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. It takes all of it away from me. It takes all of it off from me. Lord have mercy. I cannot live good enough. I cannot work good enough. I cannot act good enough to earn salvation. It is, a, it is a divine gift from God. You know the most powerful and positive scripture and memorized scripture in all the Bible? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, God the Father, that he gave his only begotten Son, God the Holy Spirit, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but what? Shall have everlasting life. We need to get to the place where we understand and realize that salvation is a God thing. It is not a me thing. You know, when people stand up and talk about, I'm holy and I'm saved and I'm sanctified and ain't got no mind to, to do sin all day long, I don't know who they're talking to. I really don't know who they're trying to impress. Because it is never my holiness. It is never my righteousness. The Bible teaches me in the book of Isaiah that my righteousness is but filthy rags in his sight. So if I'm going to brag on something, I'll be bragging on the goodness of God and the holiness of God, not my holiness or my sanctification. Because apart from God, I'm nothing. The old church is saying the song, without God, I could do nothing. I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting like a ship. Like a ship, like a ship without a sail. If you don't get anything else from this teaching today, get this. Salvation is a gift from God. The only thing me and you and anybody can do to get it is surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept the finished work at Calvary. Not by works of righteousness. None of us can boast. Listen to me. Paul is trying to get us to understand that God loves us so much that although he manifests himself in three ways, in all three ways, he's trying to bring us to redemption. And redemption and salvation, my brother, my sister, is nothing but an act of faith. Quit trying to make it so hard. Quit trying to make folk think they got to jump through hoops and loops in order to get to Jesus Christ. Just say to, them, say to them what the gospel said. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, repent of your sin because you're convicted by the Holy Spirit. Because John tells us no man, woman, or girl comes to Christ unless he's drawn to you. The Holy Spirit right now is trying to convict you of your sins and convince you that Jesus is the Savior. Would you let him do that in your life? He's not going to force himself in your life. He's there right now, nudging you and wooing you and encouraging you and pulling you and embracing you, trying to get you to come to him. Behold, he stands at your heart's door knocking. If you will open up by faith, he will come in. And you have fellowship with you, eternal fellowship. And you can have fellowship with him. Today, my dear brother, my dear sister, if you're not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, would you invite him into your life right now? It would be the best thing you've ever done, first for yourself, and then for the people who love you and the people who you love. Because they will see a whole brand new person if you're really serious about repenting of your sins inviting Jesus in. Would you?
If I'm speaking to you, you know who you are. Would you pray this prayer with me very quickly? Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I accept the blood of Jesus at Calvary as a covering for all of my sin. And right now, by faith, I invite you into my life. And I'm saved because you are saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you invited the Lord in your life, find a Bible church, will you? A church that teaches and teaches the Bible as inspired in errant word of God. St. Paul Church would love to have you as a part of this faith ministry. And we are faith ministry. We are the body of Christ. All you have to do is inbox as a bishop. I'd love to be a part of that ministry. Give me some information so I can communicate with you further. Get you some materials so you can learn how to be a good follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're already a person of faith but you do not identify with a local body of faith, a local church, the St. Paul Baptist Church would love to be that home for you. Just a bishop, I listen to your preaching. I listen to your teaching. I learn from you. And I grow when I hear you. And I love to identify as a part of your church. Let me know so I can be in touch with you. And remember, God loves you. And so do we. Send us your prayer request. If you live in the Racine, Kenosha, Milwaukee area, we love to see you on Sunday. Push the share button. Will you do that? And share this word with somebody else. Use these notes for your own personal Bible study with your family and your friends. And remember, until we meet again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his candles upon you. And you're going in and you're coming out from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. See you Sunday.